In this video, I'll talk about how to get started in investing if you're a complete beginner and have never tried it before. And we're starting right now. Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another video from the Keystone Financial Academy. My name is Elliot and if you're interested in personal finance, investing in real estate, I invite you to join our community by subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos on these topics. Okay, let's talk about investing. If you're a complete novice and have never tried investing before, this video is for you. And before we get into specifics, I want to discuss three very general items that apply really to anyone just starting out in investing. The first thing that absolutely needs to be mentioned is that you should only invest with disposable income. And by that, of course, I mean money that you're not using for rent, mortgage, food, car payments, student loan payments, etc, etc. And believe it or not, I've heard this line of reasoning from some people is, look, I have a thousand dollars, I need it in a couple of weeks for rent, but I have some time, so I'm going to put it into the market, I have some ideas, some uh, hot stock tips, so I'll make a little bit of money, maybe a couple hundred dollars, withdraw it in a few weeks, and that'll be my profit, and I can still use the money later on. Now, that's very flawed reasoning, you should not do that because, well, A, you could lose your money, B, you could not make any money at all and end up just wasting your time or withdrawing the money right back out, and C, this is really not investing. I would say this is more speculating, even gambling. Investing, which brings you meaningful returns, really takes time, more than a few weeks. We're talking months and years, and yeah, you could get lucky and a hot stock tip, but that happens very rarely, and you're really risking money that you need otherwise for bills. So bottom line, only invest with money that you don't need for anything else is your disposable income and you're going to dedicate it just for investing. The second thing that absolutely needs to be mentioned is that you should pay off your high interest debt before you invest. Now I didn't say all loans and all debt if you have mortgage, car payment, student loans. These are all relatively low interest debts. So what I'm really talking about is high interest credit cards and the reason you shouldn't invest before you pay off your credit cards is just simple math. Credit cards charge you an interest rate that is is quite high. It could be 14, 16, 18, 20, even higher depending on the card. And if you think about it, you're just not going to make those kind of returns in the stock market. So if you put money in the market and you make even a pretty good 10% back and your credit cards are charging you 18% interest, as you can see, you're losing money. So the bottom line is pay off your high interest credit cards first and then invest. And the third item that needs to be mentioned in spite of number two, you should also not wait too long to invest. Now, assuming you have disposable income and you've paid off your high interest credit cards, then definitely get started investing. Sometimes the hardest first step is just to get started. And you really shouldn't wait too long. You want to get started early, hopefully in your teens if you have the money. If not, in your early 20s when you uh, start working and definitely by your 30s. Because if you wait till your 40s or 50s, well, I would never say it's too late to start investing. You've really missed out on years, really decades, of accrued interest and investment gains. Bottom line is, start investing as soon as you possibly can, assuming you have disposable income and paid off your high interest debt. Okay, so let's say you're fine with everything I just discussed and you have the disposable income and you don't have the high interest debts and you're maybe in your 20s or 30s and you're working, making money and you're ready to invest. Okay, item number one, check close to home, so to speak, and take a look at your benefits at work and if you have a 401k. 401k is a really great entry point into investing and it can be even better if your company matches your own contribution. So for example, if they match up to 5%, then you should be contributing up to 5% of your salary into the 401k and then your company will match with their five and you actually get 10% of your salary saved every month. That is really free money from your company. It's a great perk. Now obviously not everybody has this, not every company offers this, but if they do offer it where you work, absolutely sign up and take advantage of that. Okay, so item number two, supposedly you already have your 401k and you want to invest outside of that. The next thing you should take a look at is IRAs or individual retirement accounts. These tax advantaged accounts are a great way to also invest and you can contribute up to $6,000 per year in pre-tax income. Additionally, take a look at a possible Roth IRA, which is the same idea, but now it's post-tax income. Both can easily be opened through a brokerage and if you have the money, max them out. These tax advantage accounts are great for investing. Even if you have a 401k, you can also have IRAs on the side. 
for additional retirement savings. All right, let's move on to item number three. So besides 401k, IRAs and Roth IRAs, what else can you invest in? So one good advice for beginners that a lot of financial advisors suggest is to invest in index funds. Now an index fund is just a mutual fund that invests in tracks and index such as the S&P 500. And I actually have a video that goes into this in extensive detail. I'll leave the link in the description below. But why invest in index funds? Well, a couple of reasons. They are very easy to invest in. You just open up a brokerage account and purchase the funds. They are very easy to understand. You know exactly how they work. And finally, index funds are very inexpensive. They have very low management fees because you don't have to pick stocks. The stocks already picked for you. They're in the index that the fund tracks. Now, another version of an index fund is an indexed ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. And there are some differences between an index fund and an index ETF that we won't get into here, but it doesn't matter as long as they follow an index such as an S&P 500. I do have a video on ETFs as well. If you want to learn more about them, I'll leave a link in the description below. Meanwhile, right here, I'm going to put up a couple of ETFs and index funds that are some of the bigger ones around and check them out, uh, research them, and you'll see their management fees are extremely low and they're all good candidates for investing. All right, let's move on to item number four. Where else can you go besides index funds as a beginner investor? So yes, you can invest in regular stocks, which you pick out on your own. And picking stocks is probably the most fun part of investing, but it's generally not recommended for a beginner because you really need to know what you're doing. Now, this is ironically how most people envision themselves investing when they first think about it. They don't think about index funds or 401k. They think about picking stocks. One strategy you could follow if you really want to pick your own stocks is dividend investing. You would pick stocks that pay a good dividend, one that's also been increasing over the years. And I have a whole video on dividend investing. I'll leave a link in the description below. But essentially, there's a document that I recommend you read called the U.S. Dividend Champions, and it lists out companies that have raised their dividend for many, many years, with champions being 25 years or more. That way, your selection of stocks is somewhat simplified. You just pick the stocks that are in that champion list and build a portfolio out of them. And dividends, of course, are profits that are paid out by the company to eligible stockholders. And finally, item number five for today is investing in bonds. Now, beginner investors generally don't think about bonds when they think about investing and you may not know a lot about bonds at all. You may have maybe gotten one for your birthday or something like that. But this is a huge market and I'm going to really briefly mention three types of bonds that you can possibly invest in. The three from the federal government are treasury bills or T-bills and they have a maturity of less than one year. The second is treasury notes or T-notes and they have a maturity of greater than a year but less than 10 years. And finally we have treasury bonds which have a maturity of greater than 10 years. You can buy all of them at this website right here, treasurydirect.gov. There are also municipal bonds sold by municipalities, they're called munis, and there are also corporate bonds sold by corporations. You can buy all of those through brokerage or bond dealers or sometimes from the corporations or municipalities themselves. So as a final note, bonds I would say are probably not the first thing you'll think about, but they're a stable investment and you can certainly go that route. They don't return as high as stocks, but on the flip side, they're much safer. All right, so hopefully all of the above should give you some ideas about what to do, what not to do, and what to look into when you are a beginner investor. As always, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and let me know in the comments below what other topics you would like to see me cover more of. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.